Hey everyone, welcome back to another SolidWorks video. We're going to be going over sheet formats and templates today. Uh, we're doing this because it's honestly really weird to try to figure out how to actually make your own sheet format and templates. So I thought I would show you guys some tips that I've kind of learned on how I like to do it for myself. Uh, as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you want more notifications in your life, you can hit the bell and uh, you'll get them. So uh, thanks for watching and let's get started. So I've made this uh, test piece. It's just like a basic, I don't know, L thing. I just threw it together. And uh, we're gonna use it mainly for attributes and some views. We're not actually going to really do anything with it. I'm not even gonna probably dimension it or anything. So for now, we're gonna pretend that you already have a template and you just want to change some stuff. So we're gonna go up to file and then I like make drawing from part. You don't have to do it this way, but I find it easy, so I'm gonna do it this way. It'll give you your options of folders that you have templates in. This is the template I created for this project, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. Now, as you see, it's got uh, like a disclaimer, don't steal my stuff. It's got uh, my title block tolerances. It's got that it's an inch drawing. You know, I drew it, I approved it. Uh, the projection, which is nice to know. And it's got the, you know, this is me. There's the drawing number, which in this case is just actually the part number of the file. And uh, my sheet numbering. Kind of what you can do from here is just drag on, you know, your view whether it's an assembly or a part, what have you. Uh, but we're just gonna do that for now. And there's a couple things that I noted when I was reviewing this format that I made that I wanted to change. Um, so let's kind of just dive into that. The first thing is that this is showing the drawing title of the sheet format itself. Just using basic SOLIDWORKS, we're not using any um, like PDM system for, for this video. I've got it set so to use the properties title of your, or it should be set to use the properties title of your part to actually fill this in for you. Right now, it's using the title um, category for the um, format itself. So we need to correct that. So how we can correct that is you can not just double click on it. That won't actually work. You need to first left click it edit sheet format, and that unlocks it. It also removes, as you can see, the drawing, or the, the part geometry that you had on, on the drawing. Now you can do things like select the text boxes or the lines. It's nice because it prevents you from accidentally moving things, whether it's the part that you're actually dimensioning or the sheet format itself, it just locks it. So you've gotta to remember to always tell it to edit the sheet format or you can't change anything. So now we're going, to, we're going to come here and I'm going to double click this and I'm just going to hit delete. And now I could type in, you know, test part, if I could spell test part today, but that's not how I want to do it because it kind of defeats the purpose of having a format that auto fills things for you. So we're going to leave it blank. We're going to come over here to this button right here, the link to property button. You click that and it will bring up this text box and what I like to do is tell it model found here because this is a drawing. And now it will show that it's the drawing uh, view specified in sheet properties. And we have some views on here, which are the test part views. So we can just come down here now and go title from the test part and it adds it here. Have you subscribed? You go ahead and click OK. And now that is autofilling. That's not the only change I want to make. I'd also like to add another angular uh, tolerance. Let's say I've got, I don't know, something that I think for whatever reason I need to hold really, really tight and I need it all over so I don't want to dimension it every time that I need a really tight angle. So I'd like to add um, another one here. How I did this was um, it's just one text box and it's just a continuation of the lines. So it goes right over. So in order to do this, we just space over, add our capital X, double X there, come over here. This is the, uh, the symbol drop down and you can choose, you know, from a bunch of symbols, depending on what you're looking for. In this case, I just need the, the regular ones. So tell it degree, and then we'll say equals. And then we come back over here again, grab our plus or minus, and we'll say 0.1 degrees. The last thing I did is I made it look nice by 
attempting to do my best to um, line up these equal signs. It doesn't always work, and sometimes you just have to deal with it. And I'm thinking that this is one of those times where I'm just going to have to deal with it. I've also noticed that over here on our four place decimals that our plus or minus five uh, should have another zero on it. You'll notice that surface finish didn't move. That's because it's actually a different text box. You, when you do the surface finish, it actually takes up like two lines worth of space and I didn't have two lines worth of space. So I just made it its own little thing and snuck it up in there. Now. I'd like to show you how you can modify things like the lines. These are just drawn lines. And because they're just drawn lines, I use dimensions on them because I like to be able to actually control where they go. And you don't see them because I've actually gone ahead and made a hidden format layer. And the hidden format layer, which I'm going to make green now just for clarity, that's where I put all of my dimensions that kind of control the format lines. All of the writing, the text, or the lines, except for the outer border, those are all under format. So everything here will be on the format layer, except for the dimensions that actually govern where they are. So for instance, let's pretend that I want to kind of increase this height because I want to make my sheet size a little bit larger. So that's just this guy right here. And let's say we want to do like I don't know, 0.35. So we'll increase it by 50,000. So you can do that. And I'm noticing now that this actually isn't a square. It was supposed to be a square, but it's not because it has no dimension. So what we can do is go ahead and dimension right here, another 0.35. And then we're gonna come down here. And we're going to tell it that it is the hidden format that changes its color because it's now on the hidden format layer. And when we hide that layer again, it will be hidden as well. So we'll come up here and we'll just kind of move this back. These are just kind of eyeballing. There might be a better way of doing this, but they snap to each other pretty well. And I've just been kind of, you know, rolling with that. Sometimes you can get them to snap nicely vertical and sometimes you can't. There might be a way. If there is, leave a comment, let me know. Cause I'd actually love to know how to do that. Um, because I've just been kind of eyeballing it sometimes for things that aren't super critical. Let's see, is that too big? No, that's fine. That looks good. And we need to move this guy up and over a little bit. And we need to bring this guy up some. Now, because we moved this line and these are all collinear, we also need to move these guys up a little bit, which is fine. These are actually centered in their box. So you can right click on it and come down here to snap to rectangle center. And then you can just click four lines and it'll move to the center for you. So it's a very simple way to get things centered. Go ahead and do that for these little guys. Now, as you can see, it doesn't matter that some of these lines are longer. It's not going to like snap into the center line of some, you know, colossal line compared to something else. It's just going to snap to the box that it makes. This one will be interesting. I think it'll be fine, though. Yeah. OK, cool. I was kind of worried because that line didn't go all the way over, but it ended up being fine. So we've now got these recentered. This guy here needs to be brought up. So we'll just bring that up some, and this will bring up some. And we've now gotten this uh, a little bit larger here. So we'll come up here, and we will exit that. Now, you can still see all of my dimension lines because I haven't hidden that layer yet. So I need to come back down here and tell it to hide my layer. All right, so I've just noticed that uh, we forgot to raise the third angle projection label up a little bit so we're gonna go back in here not clear selections why are you there we go if something weird like that happens uh, another tip is to just keep hitting escape that's more or less a solidworks thing i don't know about other programs but um, in solidworks escape is your friend the more you hit it the more it might do what you want uh, actually this is another case where we can use snap to the center Just kidding. 
we cannot use snap to the center, which is fine. We'll just raise it up some and do it right about there. That looks good. So now that we've got that guy recentered, we're going to go ahead and save this as a new as a new format. So I'm actually going to get rid of this part because I don't want that in the format. To save just the format, you use save sheet format underneath save as. And this is important because if you save if you don't save the format like this, you won't actually have it. You can't just save it as a drawing. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. The next thing I'd like to do is now update my drawing template. So the difference between a format and a template is subtle but important. The format is everything you see here. It's the lines on the page before you put anything on it. The template is more than that. The template is things such as your settings you have, so like how many decimals your dimensions are, whether they're, you know, five or four or two or one or whatever. Um, it's things like whether you're using the ISO standard or the the um, ANSI, you know, line types, you know, arrowhead styles. It's all of those kind of things. Those are all saved into the template itself. The format doesn't save those. So if you've come up here and you've gone to, you know, document properties and you've changed things like, you know, you want to have your balloons look a certain way or you'd like your linear dimensions to always be yeah here like you know seven decimal places or something crazy you would change this up here and that way when you save your template you'll always have those changes made let me make sure that didn't actually keep that at seven because that would just be silly all right good all right so the other way to do that if you're just trying to change your decimals how i usually do it is i come down here to document units and i actually just do it right here now that I've done that, I'd like to make this template a little bit more useful. You know, most drawings have some sort of note on them. So now you can come over here, and for the template, you can actually add a box, and you can say something like, we'll make it bold and underlined. We'll do notes, and we'll say, unless otherwise specified. And we'll take away the bolding and the underlining. And now we'll start a numbered list. We will say uh, the first note that we want to have is, um, you know, let's say that it's got a, you know, low, oops. Uh, wow, I cannot spell today. A load capacity of, let's say, like, 20,000 pounds. I like to double space my notes if I have room. Um, as you notice, if you double space, you get another note. So if we come down here and we say something else like, you know, break all edges, um, which is technically in the title block. Um, it should also just be done, but sometimes it's not. Uh, so I'm just going to throw it in the notes as well. Uh, mainly because I'm trying to make more notes up on the spot, which is actually more difficult than you would think it should be. Uh, oh, let's say we can, um, uh, let's say we want it to be painted uh, black um, with, I don't know, uh, dupli color. I don't know if there's a hyphen in dupli color or not. Uh, let's say spray paint. And then you'd probably want to give it, you know, like a, color code or something and things like this painted black or you know anodized or a color to anodize something or if you're going to plate it with something you know cadmium nickel plate whatever you'd want those to be in the notes but you'd also only want those to be in the notes for certain parts because obviously if you've got like a steel part you're probably not going to try to have them anodize it so we can alter that though pretty easily so now that i've got you know a couple of notes here you know, if you if you go up and down with the arrow keys, you skip those blank ones, but those blank spots are still numbered. So what actually works nicely is you bring your cursor over to the beginning here. I'll zoom in so you can actually see this. You bring your cursor over to here, and then you just click the, sorry, not the up arrow. You click the left arrow to bring you backwards, and then you can delete it. And then you can click the up arrow, and that will bring you to the next line. 
and then hit the left arrow again. That will bring you to the last uh, line. And again, you can delete that. And now you've got your notes one, two, three, and they're spaced, the double spaced. And now let's go ahead and put a material kind of over here. We'll say it's uh, 1018 cold rolled steel. And we'll go ahead and make that like size 18. So now we've got some information on our template. And that'll be useful because now if we have a 1018 cold rolled steel part that needs to be painted, uh, painted black, if we just, and it has this load capacity. So actually this load capacity is probably a terrible note for this. So let's say um, uh, part must, ooh, actually, um, dimensions apply prior to painting. Because that is important. If you coat or plate or anodize something, you will want to state when your dimensions actually apply for your final, your, you know, for your, your QC process. Um, coatings add thickness, and so depending on what your tolerance is, uh, your tolerance band is, they can either be out of spec or in spec because of your, your coating. So you'll want to tell them when your dimensions actually apply, whether it's as it goes to the coders um, or when it comes back. So, all right, now we've got a little bit more of a generic template, and we're going to come up here, and we are going to do a save as, and we're going to say we want to save it not as a drawing, but as a drawing template. And I'll bring up some other drawing templates that I've made. We're going to just leave it this name, and we're going to go ahead and hit save. This little box will come up, and you can go ahead and say, okay. And you've now got an empty template. So if we go ahead and just close that template, we have our part here. Now we can go file, make new drawing from part. This is our test template we just made. Hit okay. And we have our notes already applied, our material already applied. All of this is here when we add the front view. So that's how you can go ahead and make a template or modify a sheet format. I'm going to leave with one other trick that you can do if you'd like. So with the layers, something that you could do is um, go ahead and get rid of these views. You can come over here and you hit layer properties and then you just hit new and you say uh, 10. In this case, you obviously you would name it whatever you want your, your, excuse me, you would label it whatever you'd like your layer to be called. So I'm going to call this one 1018 steel notes. Actually, I don't even need notes. That's redundant for me. So I'm going to do that. And I am going to now take this and this, select them both, and put them on the 1018 steel notes. You could also do this if you just had your notes on a, a regular notes um, layer. But I actually like this layer better because now your notes will come on and off. That one's just selected, which is why it wasn't disappearing. So let's come over here, and now it should disappear. It's just not going to do it. There we go. It's all the way disappeared. So the 1018 steel layer notes are now gone, which means if you also had a aluminum, you know, an aluminum notes section, we're going to bring the 1018 steel notes back because I would actually like to copy paste them. And now we're going to turn the 1018 notes back off. And apparently when you copy paste, I didn't realize this, the layer uh, stays. So that's cool. So we're going to click those and we're going to put them on the aluminum layer. And now we're going to put them basically at the same spot. They'll snap to itself, so that's helpful. And we can take off the 1018 steel and we can now go to the aluminum layer. And we can go ahead and tell this that this is going to be you know, 60, 61, D6, aluminum alloy. And that this over here, we're not going to paint it black. We're going to, um, oops, give me my number back. We're going to anodize clear you know, per whatever spec you need to use for your purposes. 
And now we're going to go there and delete that. And again, dimensions will apply prior to, whoops, not painting, prior to anodize. And so now we've got these two separate note sets that you can save to your template that if you want to not have separate templates for each one. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll leave it as aluminum and we can go ahead and save as and we're going to make it a template again. We're going to take this and because we've changed it we're going to call it the Rev B version. And now we can go back to our test part and we can say make our drawing from it. We're going to use our Rev B version and we can drag it on here and then we can say oh wait it shouldn't be aluminum it should be steel. As simple as that and now your part will be made from steel if they read the flag notes. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if it was, please give me a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see more stuff like this. And uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you have more questions. I know this was kind of a long but somehow fast video. Um, sheet formats are really weird. There's probably a bunch of different ways to do it. And um, yeah, let me know if you have uh, questions or comments and what you might want to see next. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.